guys, there is a lot of news about the Lori Vallow Daybell case and also about the Chad Daybell case. I'm not sure if I'm gonna cover them both in this one video, but I will do both cases. And I'll start with Lori Vallow Daybell. If you have any questions about this case, just leave a comment in the comments below. And I hope you will subscribe if you have not already subscribed. And for anyone asking or wondering why I am whispering, this is an ASMR video. Uh, my previous ASMR true crime videos have gotten quite some hate and some negativity because of the fact I was whispering. So if this is not for you, please you're free to leave and there are many many other videos about this case that are not whispered thank you so much so about Laurie Vallow Daybell in case you don't know anything about the case I will give you a very short um, talk about who she is and what happened Laurie Vallow is now in prison for murdering her children and uh, there was some news about her. I heard last week that she was going to be moved um, by plane and that there was a weather issue. Um, she was going to another city to have a hearing. The sheriff confirmed this in Maricopa County. She left at about 9.44 a.m. from Pocatello. They picked her up in IDOC in Pocatello and per the extradition agreement with Arizona, the Idaho Department of Correction transferred custody of Lori Vallow to a transport team from Maricopa County, Arizona at 9.44 a.m. Wednesday, this past Wednesday. The transfer occurred at the Pocatello Women's Correctional Center, where she has been incarcerated since July 31st. They put her in a car and they moved her across the country from Pocatello down through Utah down to Arizona in Maricopa County where she was booked around 1 a.m. She was arraigned around 2 a.m. I think. This video shows Lori being booked and processed at the Maricopa County Jail. The sheriff said that they took two vehicles to transport her and she is there in a blue jumpsuit. She has long sleeves. When she left the prison in Idaho, it's much colder here, probably in the teens for the temperature than it is in Maricopa. You can see the one deputy there has short sleeves. This is where they have to search her, make sure there's nothing on her, take off her shoes and check for any sort of contraband, any sort of weapons. And as far as we know, there was none of that there. She's going through the x-ray, kind like at the airport the metal detectors she flashed green so she is cleared and then it's off to be processed now the sheriff made it clear that all inmates go through this process in Maricopa County most facilities do this they changed her into their uniform which is the orange jumpsuit it's not really a jumpsuit but okay and she's got her reading glasses on her and this was after 14 to 16 hours of driving by the way and now they're going to take her photo her mock shot and um, we're kind of doing a recap about the latest on Laurie Vallow so here's where that's the mock shots I don't understand her look why does she look so weird in her mugshot and why is it allowed to change her face that much 
aren't you supposed to look like straight in front of you with a normal, relaxed face, I think? I don't know. So the next part I want to show you is where Lori Vello appears in Arizona courtroom for the first time on conspiracy to commit murder charges dressed in that orange county jail outfit. Daybell appeared before Judge Tracy R. Netzia in a hearing that lasted about three minutes. The judge explained the charges and then Daybell asked if the two cases will be handled separately or together. There are two separate cases, but they will be handled at the same hearing, the judge said. They are two separate cases, so you would have two separate proceedings going forward as it goes to trial. Daybell was extradited from Idaho to Arizona like we just saw. She's not eligible for a bond and her next hearing is scheduled for December 7th at 8.30 a.m. I am now going to tell you exactly what was said in the courtroom. So I will just read what the judge said and what Lori said. So the judge said to her, Miss Fellow, you are appearing here on two cases. These are both grand jury warrants. What that means is that the grand jury here in Arizona has indicted you on two charges. The first case is CR and then a number. You are being charged in that case with one count of conspiracy to commit first degree murder. It is a class one felony committed on October the 2nd of 2019. The second case is C and then a long number. And in that case, you're also being charged with one count of conspiracy to commit first degree murder. It is also a class one felony that offense allegedly occurred on July 11th of 2019. I have to advise you of your right to have an attorney at the right and the right to remain silent. I will appoint counsel for you in both cases. I have a court date coming up for you called a not guilty arraignment. Hearing. Give me just a second. That hearing is going to take place in the downtown Phoenix Superior Court in our central court building. And the date is going to be next Thursday, December 7th at 8.30 in the morning. Okay, in both cases you are, you have been extradited from the state of Arizona. You are currently under the jurisdiction of the Idaho Department of Corrections. That makes you non-bailable at this hearing, so you are not eligible. You are not eligible for bail in either case. You do have your court date. You know a lawyer is going to be appointed to you. Do you have any questions? And then she says, are those cases going to be combined or are they going to be done separately? Well, says the judge, they are two separate cases, but they are going to be handled at the same hearing, okay? So you can talk to your lawyer, but they are two separate cases, <clears throat> which means that you would have two separate proceedings going forward if it goes to trial, okay? Any other questions? And then she says, um, just one attorney or more attorneys will be assigned. And then he says, well, at this point in time, at this point in time, you're likely going to have the one lawyer represent you at this particular hearing. 
what the county public defender does at this point in time with respect to who they assigned for counsel for you or how many lawyers you have or anything like that that will be between you and your lawyer okay she says and he says any other questions so you are saying that I will be able to talk to them before that arrangement hearing or will just at that arrangement hearing and then the judge says well typically you do meet your lawyer at the arraignment hearing under the circumstances of this case they may reach out to you before that hearing to have discussions with you um, there is also a telephone number that you're going to have on your paperwork that will be able to connect you with the mara I think they made a little mistake here in the text. It says Myroba County. Well, to connect you with the county public defender office. Okay, all right. Thank you, Miss Fellow. Appreciate. All right. Thank you. So that's it. So this was Lori Vello's first appearance for the first time on conspiracy to commit murder charges. Lori Vello Daybell is a mother of two, actually three children, but she killed two of the three children, JJ and her daughter, Tylee. Tylee. The son was very young, JJ. He was about seven, I think, and I think that um, Tylee was about 16. Lori Vello Daybell had been married for several times, I think four times, before she met Chad Daybell. And she loved his books, she loved his ideas about the afterlife and all those kind of things. And ultimately she got married to Chad Daybell, but not before she made sure to kill her husband or have him killed by her brother. And I also think she murdered her um, former husband, Joe Ryan. He was uh, found under suspicious circumstances, so I think she murdered him as well, but that's a whole other topic. Um, <coughs> Chad Daybell killed his wife um, in 2019, and he married Lori Vallow Daybell in just two weeks after his wife died. He said it was for of natural causes and he refused an autopsy, which is weird. And he also had a very strange story about how she died. And um, because of the children's deaths, people started thinking about the death of Tammy Daybell, the wife of Chad Daybell before um, Laurie married him. Ultimately, Tammy did get a an autopsy. They had to um, dig her up from the grave and do an autopsy. In that autopsy, it was found that she died from suffocation and that it was a homicide. So, it's very, very possible that her husband did it because he was next to her in the bed that night. But it could also be that Lori Vallodaybell's brother committed this crime. Allegedly, he killed a lot of people that were in the way of Lori and Chad. Alex, the brother of Lori, died as well under fishy circumstances. Oh, there's a loud noise right now. Wait. So, um, yeah, we don't know how the brother died.
died, how Alex died exactly, but it was possibly murder as well. Um, kind of the fall guy, you know, the guy who did all the killings and had to go. Yes, had to die, I should say. If you want me to do a longer video on the Chad Daybell and Laurie Vello Daybell case, just let me know. If you need more background information, let me know. Um, I've listened and watched videos about this case a lot, so I could do a deep dive if you want me to. Also, let me know if you want me to do a video about Chad Daybell's hearing this week, that just happened this week. And it was about whether there would be cameras in the courtroom, among other things, of course, but that was one of the topics. Just let me know if you want to know what happened there, so I can do a video, possibly, about it. Thank you so very much, and I hope you liked this shorter video. Um, I had to do this really fast, because of time. I have to get this video ready very soon. So I hope everything came across as I wanted it to. Again, if you have any questions, just ask them in the comments. And any suggestions are welcome as well. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. Please leave a comment. Please leave a like. It helps the algorithm so, so much. And since I am a smaller channel, the algorithm is so, so important to grow my channel. Thanks again and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.